Okay, we're back. It's Comp 308, Week 9, Lesson 9, Part 2. And we just talked about Express and Cloud9. Again, Cloud9 is optional. Um, one thing we didn't do with, when we left off with Cloud9 when I was working with this stuff is I didn't update my, my Git. So I'm going to go back to Bash and I'm going to say clear. I'm going to go git add dot, right? Git commit minus m added uh, ejs partials. That's what I did, right? And then when I say git push, right, origin master, and it's going to push it up to GitHub. Okay, cool. This is great, but what if I really wanted to deploy this on a real cloud service, not just here with Cloud9, but a real cloud service? And I asked you guys to sign up with Heroku. Who did that? Yay, some people did what you're supposed to do. Okay, so let's go to Heroku for a second and see what the hell this Heroku thing is anyway, right? Here's Heroku.com, and if you go there, and if you've signed up, it's going to take you to your dashboard. All right, I've got this other project up there called Starbase 12 that I've kind of sent up there because we've got this other stuff going on. So if you actually want to see what this Starbase 12 thing is, right, and if I go to Starbase12.heroku.com, right, here's my Starbase12.heroku.com, if, if I did this correct, right, then... Eventually, uh, our website, our, you know, oh, there it's, it's really slow. It's going to load up my project that I did for my game project for last, uh, last semester, right? And this is live. I've deployed this thing with a node server, right? So it's an actual game with CreateJS that I did with a node server. Sorry for you guys who are on the game side. Close your eyes because you're not supposed to know this stuff, right? And it's on uh, the game server here, right? And I'm using Node.js to do that. Right, so I'm going to click start, play the game as normal, right? Right, so then, you know, I can, I can kind of do my attacking. I'm getting 8 frames per second right now because I'm running within a virtual machine, right? But this is Heroku, right? So that means that I can run it anywhere, like on the Mac side. You guys can run it right now. So if I go to Heroku, so if I go to starbase12.heroku.com, access it here on the Mac side, if you notice I'm getting much better response, and if you know, look at my frames per second on the top right corner here, I'm getting like 60 frames per second now. Start. Right. Okay, I'm going right, to kill it. You guys can play too. The uh, ASWD keys do that, right? So here I am. I'm going to kind of move over. And then, and then if you uh, strafe, you can strafe with your mouse too. You get a pretty good response from a Heroku. Right? right? Let me back up a little bit. And if you notice, that's some particle effects that I'm using, right? It's not crashing. Oh. Right? Anyway, you get the point. The point is, it's now live right, on the Heroku server, right, and I deployed it as an app, a Node.js app. So if I can do that, right, we can definitely deploy other kinds of apps. How do we deploy apps on Heroku? Well, the first thing is you need to set up, and it's not unlimited, you get a limited space. So, I mean, I got my Starbase 12 thing going on. It's probably going to be probably the, one of the only things I can put on here. I can certainly undeploy it. If you notice, it went from a, um, a, a, a sleeping state to a wake state because now people are accessing it. Right? So it's only going to work as long as I have it. If I click on my Starbase 12 app, I notice that I have something called dynos, right? Well, dynos are like, almost like how much power or CPU strength, uh, you know, uh, memory and so on, I want to declare, I want to kind of put onto my virtual machine, right? So the more dynos I add in, the more it costs me per month, right? <laughs> I want to make it really perform well, I can add additional dynos, right, to this thing. Okay, cool, cool. But what I want to do here is I want to deploy my little serve, my little app, right, which is a, a Node app. So let's do this. Let's go back to this, guys, and start off our little Node app, our Node.js app. Okay, so I want to de declare a new app, and if I go to Node.js to get started, it tells you how to do that. So here's a get started kind of screen from Heroku. And one day it's going to update. Here it is. And it says, hey, I'm ready. What do I do? I'm going to choose I'm ready. Right, and it says uh, you have to download the Heroku tool belt for Windows. 
Okay, you can certainly do that. And we can spend time doing the Heroku tool, but I've already done it. Um, it also is available for Mac, right? If you look at it, there's also Mac and Ubuntu and a standalone if you want to. Okay. However, because we're using Cloud9, we already have the Heroku tool belt installed, right? There's nothing for us to do. It's ready to go. So we don't have to do that. What we need to do is this Heroku login, right? So if I'm here in Cloud9, I'm just going to pull this down and kind of put in clear, right? I'm going to do Heroku login, right? Okay, cool, cool. Here's my Heroku. Here's asking for my credentials. So I'm going to put in my username and password. Oh, I didn't put it in properly. Let's try that again. I can't remember what it is now. <laughs> this is bad if I don't remember. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm in. And um, now that I've done that, that I've logged into Heroku, right? That's my second step. I'm just going to follow the getting started chart. So I logged in. I put my credentials in. I've installed the tool belt because it's part of Cloud9, right? If you're doing Cloud9. My app is ready. And if you notice, it says, git clone my app, right? And if you notice, I've already done this kind of stuff. And I want to CD to my Node.js getting started app, whatever it is, because that's what I've done. So my app is ready, so I don't have to do that. Click. Okay, here's cool. I got a, it says, in this step, you will deploy the app to Heroku. It says, create, Heroku create. I'm just going to create the same name of the app on Heroku. Okay, cool. Let's do that step. So I'm going to go back to here, and I'm going to go Heroku create. Okay, if I'm good, right? It says git remote Heroku added. And then if I go back to Heroku for a second and I refresh my screen, let's see if my app is here. Ah, oh, Stark Escarpment. What the hell is that? That's not what I want. That's my app, right? Unless I physically create it, right? And I can certainly try and rename this thing or whatever. But unless I physically create my app, right? Um, you know, or rename this thing, it's going to say, it's going to give it a name to, to the, for the app itself, which is Stark Escarpment 9343. I don't want that, right? Because that's what it'll just do. If I go to settings, right, and here's my name of my app under settings, I can change this to match what I'm doing, which is Express. And why it's doing that is because Heroku is global. So if I make a name, a name like Starbase 12, it's for all Heroku users, Starbase 12. <laughs> so now my Starbase 12 is on Heroku, and no one else can take that name, right? It's like almost like a subdomain, right? So if I say Express Demo, it might not be available, right? And it says, warning, renaming an app via dashboard can break your Git remotes. After you rename, you may have to do your update your Git remote, which is something I need to do, okay? And if you notice, this is my Git URL right now, right? So I'm going to have to update this thing, right? And if you notice, this is my domain. My domain is Stark Encartment. That's not going to stop. There's a lot of changes to make. And you know what? This isn't the most effective way of doing this at all. Right? So let's go back. I'm not going to do that. In fact, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go to Settings, right, which is, makes it more interesting. Because I know that if you follow the, the way of doing this thing, it won't work properly. I'm going to delete my app, right? So my app name is Stark Escarpment. 9343. Three. I'm just going to delete it. Right. And the reason why is because I want to create it so it makes sense to me. So I'm going to click this plus button up here and I'm going to choose the right name for it and let's see if it's available. Express demo. And if it's not available, like express demo is not correct because it's been taken by somebody else, I got to make it so it makes sense to me. So let's say we'll call it comp 308. All right. Well, let's see if comp 308 will work like this. I know. And then, uh, you know, maybe express demo without a D is available. Probably not. Yeah, so it's not available. But let's go back to comp um, 308. Comp 308 express demo. One big word. Okay, but that makes more sense to me than 
express demo or escarpment, <laughs> you know, whatever. That doesn't make any sense to me, right? Now I can create my app. Now once I've done my app, I've got my app. Well, this is, I did my, my login, right? Um, I've done that already. And now I want to change my Git remote to this. So this is possible. I can just take this line, copy it, right? And I can go back to, uh, what should I call it, Cloud9 and paste it in here, press that. Okay, so my Git remote Heroku has been updated now, right? Okay, cool, this is good. I'm excellent, fantastic, right? Okay, well, there's a couple of other issues, right? So one of the issues is, if I go back to my um, Heroku site, um, I've got to push. The next stage is, um, I've got to do this. Git push Heroku master, right? Now, I didn't do any additional changes, so I'm okay doing this. Git, because it's another remote. I've got two remotes now. I've got my GitHub remote, and I've got my Heroku remote. Heroku is where I'm deploying. It's where my deployment site is going to be, right? This is my end site. And by the way, you can use a custom uh, domain name to point to Heroku because Heroku is an online service, right? Just like GoDaddy or, you know, uh, Amazon services or Google services or whatever. But the great thing about Heroku is it uh, has a node server, which is what we need, right? Okay, cool. So I'm going to do this. Git push Heroku master. Let's try that. So Git push Heroku master. If everything goes well, then it's going to be good. Okay, building source, it does all this stuff. And we have some issues, right? It says, no cache available, installing node modules, right? This is our first deployment, right? And then it says, finalizing build, discovering process types, proc file declares types web. Oh man, wait a minute, I don't have a proc file right and launching done v3 well i'm missing a couple things this worked my first deployment but if i was going to run this thing if i go back to express or if i go back to heroku here's my heroku and i'm going to refresh my screen go back to apps and i've got my express demo see how there's this the my um uh my hex my hex uh image is not like this it's like this this means it's not deployed <clears throat> the reason for that is because I've got some issues. It tells me that I've got this npm start command that I'm using because I haven't deployed it with a proc file. I need a proc file to tell it, you know, how to, how many web processes and all that stuff I want to use. If I actually go here, right, I can open my application. If I try this out, hey, it works, right, for the first time. And that's how easy really it is to do, but it kind of gives you a proc file automatically for you. But sometimes my proc file, my process file, I want to make it so that it's a little bit more complex and I can add it in my own. If you notice how fast that was, right? Express is much faster than Cloud9. Express gives me actually access. But so now I'm physically deployed. My deployment's done, right? Let's do one more thing before we stop this because I need to add a couple of things. Um, you may see online, if you ever look at Heroku and Express and all that, that I need to create a proc file, right? And if you notice here, the proc file doesn't exist, right? This is the most simplest deployment, right? But if I want to add a proc file, I could specify how many services specifically I want to use. So I'm going to go right click, I'm going to go new, and in my, um, now right now it's going to partials, that's not where I want it. Sorry, let me just get rid of that. It needs to be in the main root. So I need to click on the right place, like here. <laughs> Go here, new file. I'm going to call this proc file with capital P. Okay, my proc file is going to tell Heroku how many processes to use and the type of process. So right now my process is web. So I'm going to type in web. I need a web process. And this is where it gets funky. How do I, in my proc file, it's going to tell Heroku how I want my stuff to run. NPM start will definitely run my, my, my file, right? So if I do an NPM start from down here, it'll run. But I need to use this same bin forward slash www thing to make it run. That's my real command to make it run here locally. And that's what I want to run with Heroku. But the thing is, what I need to look up is how to do a proc file. Proc file Heroku. Right? Because if I don't know how to do a proc file, right? 
proc file types and the proc file in Heroku, right? If I don't read this, then I won't know how to um, how to put together a proc file. I need to do a proc file before I deploy. And if I was to do this, right? And if you notice, PS Heroku PS is the way I can deploy um, a web service, right? This is where it becomes a little bit crazy, right? So if you notice, if I do Heroku PS scale is what I want to put in my my uh, um, in my in my proc file. I want to use that same kind of idea in my proc file. It's got to be something like PS scale web is equal to one, and then this is what I want to put in my proc file right here. So I only want to use one web process, right? Because I can't afford to do more. You can it'll cost too much money for me right now because I'm doing a free service, right? So I'm going to go back into my Express demo and I'm going to kind of put that in there. Oh, sorry. I might as well just type it. PS colon scale space web is equal to one, not two. PS colon scale, right? And then web is equal to one. I need to put that in my proc file. And this tells me the scale of my, my, my proc file, right? So that's the first thing. This is basically telling me, you know, what I'm going to, how I'm going to be deploying my, my app. Right? And then I gotta put the name of once I've declared this in my proc file, I gotta talk about um, and I'm just gonna go back here, make sure this is all correct. Um, so this is my, my first piece. From a deployment perspective, then and if I go back to my Heroku um, go back to apps for a second, just for a second, and I want to go to Node.js getting started. And if you notice on the left hand side, these are all things. I've defined a proc file, right? And um, and then I got to do something like this web node and how the thing this thing runs right so I need I can put that in here right and this is the way my, my code is going to run like npm start is what I had put in there already for my proc file but I also need to find a service actually I did that wrong so let's just go back there so my proc file should just say how I run things so my web it's a web kind of proc file let's take a look at this Right, because that's the first thing that I'm running web. It's a web type service, right? And how I run my file. In this particular case, it says node index.js, and I know that how I want to run things properly is the way that I run things here in my runner, which is node, right? Bin www. Right, I want that. Is that's my proc file. So let's go back to Heroku, right? And then I'm going to kind of, I made some changes here, so I'm going to update my GitHub. Because GitHub is separate from Heroku. Git add dot, right? Git commit minus m added proc file. Oh, proc full. Proc file, right? Uh, for Heroku. Okay, here's my added proc file for Heroku, and I'm going to press um, space, enter, and I'm going to say git push origin well, uh, master, which is going to take it to GitHub. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to git push, right, Heroku master. Okay, this is where I'm going to deploy my site for the first time again. So this is my second deployment. This is my second release in, uh, from a Heroku perspective. Right now, it works the same, except that I've specified a proc file as opposed to um, how I did it before. Now, this is a problem. So, if I go back here now that I've specified a proc file and try and run my app, I'll leave this up for a second because I need this this stuff. Here's my express demo. If I refresh, right? Hey, I'm good. Look, right? I'm still good. Sometimes what it'll give you, it'll, 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 it'll there'll be an error because you have to express also how many processes you want to use and so on. But it's already built in. It's already built my app. Clear as mud. So I've done my deployment on on Heroku, and this is what I want to show you. The other thing you can do with Heroku, one more thing, and I'll stop Heroku for now and go back to your question for the next five minutes before they run in here, right? One more thing to do with Heroku is 
If I look at my app, so here's my two apps, Starbase 12 and Comp 308 Express Demo. If I look at this Express Demo, it also tells me a couple of things. There's Deploy, and this is how you deploy it. And I can also connect it to GitHub directly. This is kind of neat. It kind of takes out the middleman, right? And then it says, view your code diffs on GitHub, deploy cha changes with GitHub. I can do all this with GitHub, and I can actually connect it here. I'm not going to do that right now, because sometimes it messes you up. Right? But for now, this is something I want you to notice, that you could directly connect, connect without using a middle service like Cloud9 or something like that here. And by the way, all these things that I've done here, if I had the Heroku, or the Heroku tool belt downloaded and installed on Windows or on Mac, I could do that with that command line as opposed to Cloud9. You don't need Cloud9. I'm using Cloud9 as a service to show you that I can do everything online now. Right? Okay, cool. So this is my Express app. And when we go do Mongo, this is one thing that I want to warn you about. We're going to do Mongo, but if you notice, on, if I click on Express, it says get more add-ons, right? Well, guess what? If I click this get more add-ons, if I wanted to include other things here, like MongoLab, remember I told you to sign up for MongoLab? It's here, right? Now, in order for you to add this uh, MongoLab add-on, guys, you need to put it in your credit card, right? I'm telling you this in advance not to freak you out because they're not going to take any money from your credit card. Right? You need to put this in so that you can make a connection so they, they trust what you're doing. There's no money involved. I've never paid a dime to these people. Right? So if I click on MongoLab and I want to add it in, it tells you I want to add my free sandbox kind of account. I already have a, an account. And if you notice, I can log in or use the command below to install MongoLab. Heroku add-ons add MongoLab. I can do that. Or I can log in. Right? If I want to go log in to MongoLab, and I'm already connected. I've already kind of have a MongoLab account, and it is already a free account, as an example. That gives me a little bit of storage. I still have a little bit of storage left, right? Um, you know, I've got that kind of thing, and it says, hey, select the app that I want, which is this one, right? And then I can add Sandbox for free, right? So when I do that, it makes a connection to MongoLab, right, directly with my Heroku account. And we need to do that. And the only way it'll do that is if you put in your credit card. But again, it won't take anything from your credit card. It won't even check your credit card for credit, right? The only thing it'll do is ask you for uh, credit information to convert, confirm who you are because you're connecting to two services, right? So just to let you know, as we move into MongoLab, and we want to connect MongoLab with Heroku to have a complete online solution, right? Everything on the cloud kind of thing, right? We need to do this piece, this add-on, right? If I go back to Express, or sorry, to Heroku, if I go back to my Heroku uh, link, so if I, instead of add-ons to Heroku, I'm going to go back, right? If I click on Apps, I go back to my Espresso, Express demo, and if you notice, look, I've got this MongoLab edition, right? Which is Sandbox. I'm not using it right now, but we're going to use it in the future as something we're going to connect to from a demo, so I'm going to leave it connected for now. Make sense? And I can edit that. I can remove this thing, you know, as, as, or whatever. I can kill my app uh, and whatever. But really, what net, right now, I have a connection to MongoLab that gives me MongoDB access. If I want to create a Mongo uh, database, which we'll talk about in next week, right? I can do that, but it can all be online. Okay, one more thing. So I've done Heroku deployment. I've talked about connecting to MongoLab and how we can connect those two things how to use Cloud9. These are all things we've talked about today. We did a little bit of an Express demo. And now, one more thing, I want to answer Lilia's question. How do I create, um, you know, a different... So I've got my partials. Here's my views, partials. But I need to create a new route for, for what I want to do thing. Right now, I only have one route. I go to routes. This is the only route that I have. It goes to this uh, forward slash, right? So let's create another route. And I'm going to use the same... Um, Template. This is my template that I'm using, right? Index, which is right here, right? <clears throat> I want to create, use the same template, but use another route, right? So let's go here. I'm going to just copy this now. In order for us to do this, we have to kill our current running server because we're changing the server now. Okay, I'm going to control C, right? And in here, control V. And this will be, instead of our home page, we'll do our, I don't know, about page. Get about page. Okay, so someone puts in a link like, or maybe in your home page, you have a link that takes you to the about, right? Well, instead of forward slash or a slash, 
it'll be about, let's say, right? So if I put, if the user says about, well, you know what? Instead of Express Demo being the headline, I'm going to change this thing so it says about, about me, right? And then here's my first headline. Instead of my first headline, I can put in, here's my first about me page. Or my, my example, <clears throat> I'll put an example about me uh, bio or something. Okay, I saved that, so I've got another route here. It's called about. It's going to still use the index template. I can make a new template that combines my header and my footer differently. Right now, I'm still using the same template, which means all I'm going to do is swap out some information right now. And I can use a different content and everything else if I want to. Right now, I'm using the same content. If I want to use making my own template, I can do that, right, as an example. Okay, cool. And I can check to see what my, I can pass into this thing, I can pass in another variable as an example to tell me what page I'm on, right? For example, right now I'm only passing title and first headline. I can also pass in another thing called page. And my page variable will tell me which page I'm on. Am I on my home page or whatever? And if I do, I can swap out my content with if statements, right? Very, very simple. So let's try this out. So now I've, I've done that. So in order for me to take, take this out, I've got to stop my, my, uh, my runner. And I'm going to rerun everything. And if everything works well, right, it's going to run it here. And if I go to my express demo.c9.io, so if I go back here and refresh, everything's good. And on the end, if I put in about and enter, then I get an about me page. Nice and quick like. Right? Example about me bio, about me, the subheading is all still there, all the same stuff that I put in there. Here's about me and my bio. And now I want to deploy to Heroku, right? Because I want the, those changes to go to Heroku because I want it to be live. This is my, de the, my development site. And now I'm going to go to, de to deployment, to production, right? So I'm going to go back out here and I'm going to go, okay, I've changed everything. So I'm going to go, Hero uh, sorry, uh, git add dot, right? There it is. And then from here, I'm going to go git commit minus M. And then I'll say added about page. Right? And then from there, git push origin master. And then from there, I'm going to go git push Heroku master and deploy it on Heroku. And when I, do to, when I go to Heroku, right, this will deploy my latest release to Heroku. It's done. I'm going to go to my Expresso, my Express page. And now I'm going to refresh it, make sure it works. We're good to go. And in here, I'm going to go about on Heroku, and if we're all good, we'll see my about me page. Yeah, get it now. So you can do a lot of little things with with uh, with uh, my deployment. So I've got a bunch of processes running, I've, and I can do this. It's cross-platform. So even if I don't have my tools, I just need to know how, how to drag and drop for some of my uh, JavaScript and so on and CSS if I want to write anything, and I can share it across platform, and I can do an express, and I can do a node server right now with Bootstrap. I use Bootstrap so far. This is what you've learned. We're using Cloud9, Heroku, and have connected to MongoLab as an add-on. Okay? That's what we've done today.